One of their newest members, Brother Mike Reese, stepping up strong. Amen. Coming on strong. I like that. I like that. If you already haven't, let me ask you, uh, for the sake of our time of worship, turn off your cell phones or put them on vibrate. Uh, and that means texting too. Amen. Amen. It means texting too. Certainly, whatever it is you need to know, you can wait a little while. Amen. 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 It's all about giving God respect. Yes. Because we're in his house. Amen. Your house, you do whatever you want to do. Right. Right. We're in God's house. Right. We ought to respect him. Amen. 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 Let me make sure mine on. <laughs> okay, we're good. All right. Amen. In part one of our message last week, we began by looking at the difference between physical bodybuilding and spiritual bodybuilding. Yes. That's how we began last week, if you recall. And, and how you see these guys on these muscle magazines flexing and just all of those muscles that they're showing off there. Listen, how you see them on those magazines that's how we should look spiritually. Okay? I want to qualify that, okay? Because we can't look like that physically, all right? Maybe a few of y'all might be able to, but uh, I think my six-pack days are over. I think I got a 12-pack right here, man. Uh, but, but, but that's how we look. We want to look strong. And we want to be able to be strong and, 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 and be able to flex our spiritual muscles yes, sir. as we do battle against the enemy. Amen? Amen? Listen, I want you to say this with me. We need to get, need to get spiritually, fit. spiritually fit. Say it again. We need to get, need to get spiritually fit. on getting our bodies in order. And, and, and again, I, there's nothing wrong with that. We should. We should take care of ourselves. And th this is God's temple. Yes. And we should do the best we can. Yes. But, but too often, we neglect the spiritual man. Yes, sir. The spiritual man gets weak, yes. flabby, out of shape, right. and, 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 and really needs some spiritual condition. Yes. Right. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right. And God told Joshua, God said, Joshua, be strong. Yes, sir. Say be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong, God said to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. You see, if you are not strong in your relationship with God, you become an easy target for the devil. And if you remain spiritually weak, the devil really won't mess with you. Because right. he's pretty much got you where he wants you. Right. So it don't pay to be spiritually weak. You become no threat to him at all. Right. Now, it, it, it's one thing to be physically out of shape. Yes, sir. It's quite another thing to be spiritually out of shape. And if you are both of those, you're in a real bad way. Physically out of shape, spiritually out of shape, 
My, 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 you are in a real rough way. You see, as I read and study and meditate on the Word of God, that's my spiritual workout. As I pray and I obey, that's also a part of my spiritual workout, and, and, and I'm on my way to becoming a bodybuilder. Right. Look at verse 2 in Romans 12 with me if you would. Look at verse 2. Paul says here in Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Notice what he says here. And he's talking to the church. Talking to us as believers. He says here, don't be conformed, but be what? Transformed. Don't be conformed, but be transformed. You see, folks, don't let the world change you. You change the world. It was said, it was said of the apostles in the book of Acts, it was said of them, these that have turned the world upside down have come to our city also. And so what happens when we become the bodybuilders that we ought to be, yes, sir. we make a difference. Yes. We really make a difference. And so you wonder why our society is in the mess that it's in? Yeah, right. I don't really fault the sinners. All right. I fault the church. Because we are not being what we ought to be. We're not being the light that repels the darkness. Some folk in church would rather be in darkness than in light. And that's not the way God wants us to be. He don't want us to be that way. Who's changing who? Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Are you walking with your maker? Yes, sir. Are you a giver or a taker? Mm -hmm. Which one are you? You might say, well, pastor, okay, um, I don't want to conform. I want to be transformed. But how do I do that? I'm glad you asked. Paul gives us the answer here in verse 2. The answer to living a transformed life. The answer to not being conformed to this world, but being transformed, the answer is by, look at verse 2, by the renewing of your mind. That's what he said there, isn't it? By the renewing of your mind. You see, folks, our minds need to be constantly renewed. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We should have, we should desire to have the mind of Christ. Yes. That's what Paul said. Right. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Having the mind of Christ. Well, preacher, what do you mean by that? I simply mean we ought to think like he thinks. We ought to act like he acts. We ought to love like he loves. We ought to serve like he serves. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Thinking, mm -hmm. behaving, mm -hmm. loving, and serving. All right. That was the kind of mind Christ had. Yeah. Yes. That's the kind of mind we need to have. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if all of us in our church well, had the mind of Christ? Well, mm -hmm. What a powerful church we would be. But for some of us, we want to have our own minds. We want to go our own way. We want to do our own thing. That doesn't build up the body. It 
doesn't. In fact, it tears down the body. But if we seek, if we desire to have the mind of Christ, that's what bodybuilding is really all about. Let's look at Romans 12.1 for a moment. Look at Romans 12.1. We just looked at verse 2. In verse 1, Paul says, I urge you, I beg you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And so we bring our bodies to God individually yes, sir. and we say Lord here I am I offer myself to you yes. as a living sacrifice yes, sir. All right. now the idea of a living sacrifice is that we continually come to him lay ourselves down at the feet of his altar and we say, Lord, yes. here I am. Do with me as you please. When you think about a living sacrifice, it's important to understand that God would not accept, and God does not accept just any kind of sacrifice. Yes, sir. He really doesn't. And if God is not going to accept just any kind of sacrifice, make no mistake about it, he's not going to accept just any kind of worship. He isn't. Half-hearted, lackadaisical, nonchalant worship is not acceptable. Here. 
Another part of bodybuilding is what I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. Another part of bodybuilding is having the right attitude when it comes to worshiping God. Right. Right. Having the right attitude. Because let me tell you something. Half-hearted, lackadaisical, slump down, get down, sleep worship ain't gonna cut it. It's not acceptable. In the Old Testament, the people of God were well aware of what God required mm -hmm. in the sacrifice. Yes, sir. They knew what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable. Mm -hmm. God stipulated that lambs mm -hmm. that had spots mm -hmm. and blemishes, mm -hmm. he said, don't bring to me. Now, a spot was an inherited flaw. In other words, the lamb may be born with a spot on his forehead because that's what his mother had. He was born with a spot on her forehead. So she gave birth, and now this lamb has a mark or a spot on his forehead. A blemish was a flaw that was acquired. In other words, if a lamb was attacked by a wolf, and if the shepherd was able to get to the lamb in time and run the wolf off, but now the lamb is wounded, <coughs> the lamb is broken, those were called blemishes. And you couldn't bring blemished animals or spotted animals to God. Because God knows that's what we would do. <laughs> Instead of giving him our best, we would give him what we don't want. That's right. So God made it plain. It's not about what you want. It's about what he wants. Yeah. What does he want? He wants us to present our bodies yes, sir. as living sacrifices. Yes, sir. Somebody said the problem with a living sacrifice, it keeps crawling off the altar. <laughs> And that's true too. Isn't it? A living sacrifice. They would bring those animals to God. They would cut their throats, slay those animals, offer them as a sacrifice. God says, well, I don't want a dead sacrifice. I want a living sacrifice. I want my people to honor me yes, yes, yes. in all that they do. Yes, yes, yes. In all that they say. I want them to honor me. So, we bring our bodies individually and we bring our bodies collectively as a church. Because we just read, the Bible says, we are one body in Christ. Yes. So we bring our bodies individually, and then we bring our bodies collectively. Because you see, Christ can't use an unholy church. All right. That's why he stipulated holy, acceptable. All right. There in verse number one, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. Yes. Holy, what did we sing at the beginning of the service? Holy, holy, holy. And the Bible says, be you holy, for I am holy, is what God said. So we should strive to live lives reflecting the holiness of God. Be holy, God tells us. To be holy is to be set apart. Mm -hmm. To get as far away from sin mm -hmm. as we possibly can. Yes. But there are some of us who try to live so close to the edge of sin mm -hmm. as we possibly can. Can I do this and still be a Christian? Mm -hmm. Can I have this kind of relationship and still be a Christian? Well, well. 
Why are you trying to live so close to the edge of sin? Mm -hmm. If you want to be holy, mm -hmm. you try to move away from that. Amen. Get away from that. Look down at verse 5. There in Romans 12. Verse 5. I want to show you something that I thought was interesting. We look at that fifth verse there. Notice what Paul says. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. Now, if you've got a pen or a pencil handy, here's what I want you to do. I want you to underline these words. That right there in verse 5. Underline we. He says, so we, being many, now underline are, and then underline one. What do you got there? We are one. We are one. We are one. One body. sing the song as we did last Sunday, make us one Lord, make us one, Holy Spirit, make us one. In his prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, here's what he prayed. Now understand, he prayed this prayer just hours just a few hours before he went to the cross. Here's the prayer that he prayed. He said, Father, that they may be one even as we are one. He was praying for unity in his body. We've got to be united together. If we're going to be the kind of church that honors God. Amen. If we're going to be the kind of bodybuilding people that God wants us to be. We've got to unite together. Yeah. Got to unite together in prayer. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. We've got to unite together in prayer. Yes, sir. We've got to unite together in praise. Yes. Yeah. Giving God the glory. So that we can become that shining light, Amen. that city that's set on a hill mm -hmm. that cannot be hid. So that we can be the ones that, that tell this lost and dying world that the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God yes. is eternal life right. through Jesus Christ. Yes.
may we once again yield ourselves to you as living sacrifices so that you might make us strong, that we might be built up and be better fit for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.